Happy Labor Day, Kings Island fans. You know, Labor Day weekend, it's, it means a lot of things to a lot of people, but to the people of Cincinnati, especially fans of Kings Island, they may think of it a little bit differently because Labor Day weekend, specifically Labor Day 1971, was the last operating day of Kings Island's mother park, Coney Island. I'm Ryan Sir, along with Don Helbig, and this is Tower Topics. Tower Topics is a podcast by Kings Island fans for Kings Island fans, because that's who we are and that's who we care about. So, Don, Labor Day, 1971, you were there. Tell me what you remember. Well, I was there, and Coney Island was uh, a big part of my early childhood. Uh, every Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Labor Day, that's where my family uh, took us. And uh, that last day, a lot of sadness going into it because my parents grew up going there. So it was a big thing for them. And uh, as kids, my my sister, brother, and I, my brother's real, real young, so he doesn't you know, really have any memory of it. But, um, you know, it was what we did. We had a lot of memories there. So, you know, we were sad as well. And uh, when we went in uh, to the park in Memorial Day, 4th of July, they had this countdown sign up that said how many days were left. You know, so you get down to that last, you know, day there and the countdowns at the very end and just a lot of sadness I remembered with everybody. It rained appropriately, you know, being the last day for Coney Island. Um, but, uh, you know, we still had a, had a great time. I remember at the end of the night, uh, you know, right before the, like fireworks, um, you know, they went over the PA system and, you know, uh, talked about the closing of Coney Island and that Kings Island, the new home was going to be, you know, beyond anyone's wildest imagination. Uh, so I remember that speech very, very well um, ingrained in me. You know, so it's amazing what I can remember. You know, I was, I was very, very young back then, but I remember more about, you know, Coney Island, like it, like it happened yesterday than, you know, what I had for dinner yesterday. So um, just very vivid memories. But, uh, yeah, it was it was a sad day. Um, and, uh, you know, we made sure we rode our favorite rides and attractions that day. Yeah, I mean, I've always been kind of like, uh, you know, I've got the gift of hindsight. You know, Coney Island closed in the form that it was in um, about a decade before I was born. But, um, you know, I try to put in the context of if they were going to close Kings Island, but they're going to make a new Kings Island a couple miles down the road that was bigger and better. You know, I think I'd be very torn where half of me would be super excited for the new park, but the other half of me would be like, they're closing my park. You know, so I'm sure that it was kind of like a, a bittersweet mishmash of emotions. But um, yeah, there was. And we knew what, you know, there was going to be certain rides from there that we were going to continue to be able to ride at the new park. Mm -hmm. And there were others that were, you know, they were just going to be demolished and we were never going to get to ride those again. Did you ever get to ride the shooting star? <sighs> you brought up a very, very sore subject mm -hmm. with me, Ryan. <laughs> um, I was mesmerized by it when I was real little, it was just this big, gigantic white structure. And you would hear the train, you know, roaring by in that when you were walking the midways. So finally, on the last day, I decided I'm going to ride. Now, I had not ridden a roller coaster in my life up to this point. So it was based on tickets. It wasn't like you just get in line, you know, so we, I, you know, you drop your, your ride tickets into the, into the little slot, go through the line, sit in the train, lap bar comes down now the train behind it you know goes roaring through the little helix and it just made this loud noise that you heard it kind of freaked me out i wanted out you know so before they dispatch the train the ride operator comes over and does the bar i get out my sister went ahead and rode without me uh, but um you know so so the i didn't think much about it at the time and then the next year i rode my first roller coaster the racer and if i have one regret from my time just being interested and involved in the amusement theme park industry it is that i did not ride the shooting star so thanks for bringing that up Ryan. yeah well you bring up painful things from my past all the time and you don't think anything of it <laughs> hey um you know what's funny it's because the the most tantamount thing i can think of for for, for me because you got to make it about me eventually is um you know uh, i was too afraid to ride screech and eagle at lasorgeville lake but on the flip side of that, I was able to get that one ride in when they reopened in 2002. So at least I can walk away with that memory. So, um, yeah, but, uh, so you wrote, uh, so I wrote it vicariously through POV right. that you see on to YouTube. Totally. So I did get the credit. ride it vicariously. <laughs> okay. So, um, 
was was were there a lot of people there? Like, do you think I know you you would told me that you guys traditionally went on Labor Day weekend. Was it busier or less busy or did the rain affect it? I mean, think? it was. Yeah. You know, the holidays were always going to be busy, you know, with it. Um, I can't really, re you know, remember that well, you know, and I, I had, you know, what's crowded, what's not crowded. Everybody has a different opinion right, of that. Right. And because it, every ride was based on the tickets. Now, you could buy an all day wristband for, for rides, but not a lot of people did that. Um, you know, the wait times for rides were never, you know, really long that I can recall. So um, I, I really can't qualify like how busy it was. I mean, there, yeah, there were certainly a lot of people there. And I do remember a pretty big gathering, you know, around Lake Como and that kind of a thing and watching the fireworks and a lot of tears and a lot of people's eyes, uh, mine included. My, you know, my parents and at the very end of the night, because, uh, you know, that's what we knew at the time. And that was our, my, you know, my biggest childhood memories, you know, up until, you know, age nine, 10 was Coney Island. What are some of the memory, like, what were some of your favorite rides there at that age that you would ride? The rides that I would ride, uh, flying scooters, which became, you know, the flying Eagles at Kings Island, mm -hmm. the grand carousel, uh, the train, which went around, uh, Lake Como, um, there was the rotor, you know, that was kind of a lot of fun when you would stick to the yeah. wall <laughs> on that and the floor would drop. Uh, the log flume was there that opened. Uh, I remember how big a deal that was and how, you know, my dad was like, we got to go to Coney Island and ride this. When news broke that they were building the log flume in the late sixties, mm -hmm. the scrambler, we'd ride that all the time. Uh, the lost river, uh, that was a dark ride. Uh, you would get in a boat and you would kind of go through this dark tunnel. Then you go up a hill and then you would splash down. Um, that was a favorite. Uh, my sister and I would ride that just over and over again. We'd get off the ride. We'd get right back in line to do it again. Uh, kangaroo ride. Uh, it was like these kangaroo character, you know, shape of a kangaroo. You would ride that and you go around in circles. You'd go up a little hill and hop. Yes, yes. Uh, that was one. And that was one of the first rides that you saw when you came into the parking lot. The kangaroo ride was like right there in front of you. So that was another one, uh, the turnpike cars, you know, love, love the turnpike cars. So those were some of the rides that, uh, you know, were, were a lot of fun for me. And uh, my final ride that I rode at the end of the night, it was a night ride. It was on uh, this like rocket ship and it would go around in circles. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah. The, the ones that were suspended. Like a obnoxiously tall a, tower, yeah. and the rocket ships were suspended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would, yeah, they would just like go around on a. Now, I, now, if I recall, and, and I'm 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 checking your knowledge here uh, on the spot, but I believe that ride actually had a couple of different ride vehicles. The last ones being the rocket ships. Am I correct? I don't know what the other ones were, but I think they rethemed it to rocket ships. But it was something else before that. Does that sound right to you? Yeah, I, there there probably was. I just remember it as rocket ships. If anyone knows and... that, please comment comment on the video or yeah it was a, uh you know it was like you know just go around in circles but it was fun especially at night because the park looked beautiful at night with all the lights oh yeah the the incandescence yeah. and stuff old school of course it was it was yeah, yeah. Oh, it was very current at the time but now it's considered old school yeah yeah but it just looked great you know with all the lights and so that was one of the things i liked about the rocket ship now remember there's no eiffel tower nothing you could climb up and get an aerial view of the park or anything at that time so um the rocket ship you know, being elevated, but it gave you that view of, of all the lights. And, um, so I, I love that ride, especially at night. Yeah. Um, so you grew up kind of around Coney Island, um, as they were dismantling yeah. Anderson Township. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, in uh, Coney Island's kind of in like the California, Ohio border, you know, a little uh, very, very East of downtown Cincinnati. But, um, did you guys ever like drive past it just to see what was up as they were dismantling it? How did that feel? Well, Interesting enough, the park, when it closed at night, as soon as all the guests were out, they started working on it right away, dismantling rides, the ones that were going to be going to Kings Island. And uh, the next morning, you know, they're on flatbed trucks. The sky ride came down really quick. Uh, the carousel was moved up there. So a lot of those rides, it didn't take long. You know, so by the time, so we're talking September 6th, 1971. So by the time they got to November 1st, those rides were not only at Kings Island, but they had, a lot of them had already been installed at Kings Island. But yeah, we did go by to see what was still there. Uh, the, the train track was still there uh, that went around Lake Como. Uh, right in front of there, too, was the turnpike you know, car track. You could see that. Um, you could kind of look in a little bit as, as you got into the fall because the leaves and that would come down. And you could see you know, the buildings and that were still there. But a lot of the ride structures you know, were gone. Uh, Lost River was still up you know, that, that structure, but 
yeah, we would do that just to see what was going on. But we'd also, you know, about once a month, we would drive up to Mason, Ohio, which my father referred to as out in the boondocks <laughs> from where we lived in Anderson. As Township. many, you know, many did minutes back to get then, there. there was nothing in Mason. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my, that was one problem my dad had with Kings Island. The other thing was uh, he couldn't believe that they were going to charge six dollars mm-hmm. to get in. Now, I think when my dad, if he had thought about it, as much as we rode all the rides, we certainly were spending more than six dollars on ride tickets right. at the time. So you just don't think about that when you're doing it. But we would go up to um, to Mason and we would drive by the park. Columbia Road uh, drove right by the front yep. gate, and there's still parts of that road. You know, when you're coming into the park, you go down behind uh, like in Vertigo and Timberwolf back that way. You know, that's Columbia Road. Yeah, that's the original uh, Columbia Road, so can, right? Yeah, so you could drive right by it and look in. They didn't have the front, you know, gate facade or anything like that up at the time. So you had a great visual of the fountain being constructed. Uh, we saw the Eiffel Tower going up. That went up pretty quick, actually. You could look back and you could see the house where the carousel was going to go. You could see the racer had been constructed. So by the time you got to the fall of 1971, I mean, the racer had been built. So you could see back and see the uh, the racer back there. You could see some of the buildings on International Street, you know, starting to go up. So we saw that progress. Um, my dad would pull the car off to the side of the road and he would take some pictures. I don't know whatever happened to those pictures. I would love to have those pictures now of, of the park going up. Um, but, yeah, we would definitely do that. And, you know, we would drive by Coney and just to see what was there. And then they kept Sunlight Pool open. Mm-hmm. So we would go back, you know, not the same, you know, when you go into Coney on those holidays back in the 70s because all you had was, was uh, you know, the, the pool there. And we would walk around, you know, the park and – see stuff that was still, you know, some of the structures were still up, but every year, you know, fewer and fewer of them, but I could go there today and I could walk the property and I could tell you where certain attractions were, where the midway was, uh, where the shooting star went for the longest time. There were still the footers from the shooting star that you could see. Uh, it was a grass, you know, field by that, you know, later in the eighties mm-hmm. and, but you could still see where those were. And then, you know, river bend, uh, when that was built, part of the river bend where that is now was, you know, where the shooting star kind of ran along that. It ran along the Ohio River. Um, so didn't write it, but I was very aware of where it was. Uh, but I could tell you where the Lost River was. I could walk around and point all those different spots out. The Land of Oz. So just a lot of memories there. It's amazing, you know, when you really love something, have a passion for it. Um, you know, no matter how young you were at the time, how vivid those memories still are. You know, here's some you know, what, 52, 50, yeah, 52 years later. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd love to, to do a video short of walking around. Cause I've always been curious as to where the stuff was, because for me, Coney Island has always been, um, you know, the giant pool and several smaller rides, but, you know, just knowing the history and knowing that this park sits where a much bigger park was several decades ago is, is always been fascinating. Yeah, And, and the charm. Oh I yeah. Mean, it's, I really haven't been to too many parks that have that same kind of charm that Coney Island had. It had an acknowledged reputation as the finest amusement park in the country, you know, during its day in the you know, the 50s, the 60s, all the way up to 1971. I mean, they kept the park in beautiful shape, very well landscaped. Um, everything would look like freshly painted all the time. You know, it's unfortunate they had those issues with the floods. Yeah. Uh, but I was at a park uh, this weekend with the Kennywood uh, just outside of Pittsburgh and the charm that that park has, it brought back memories of Coney Island. It had the same kind of feel, you know, looking at the buildings and, you know, they kind of came up around the same time, you know, opening in the late 1800s. So to go there, it rekindled memories for me of Cincinnati's Coney Island and what my first impression of amusement parks were. Absolutely. You know, and I, I guess that, uh, it would be, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fun fact that they had, but the ginkgo trees, is that how it's pr- pronounced? And they would make, they would cut those yeah. into kind of like topiaries where they would be cone shaped. Mm-hmm. They moved those to Kings Island. They were in Coney Mall for several years. Then when they redid Coney Mall and decided they didn't want the trees, as opposed to cutting them down, they transported them back to Coney Island. I don't know if they're still there or not, but they went back home. I think that's super interesting. And they did, yes. Yeah, but th- those were, you know, very memorable too. That midway at Coney Island, 
you know, with those trees when you walk down and you, you know, there's still photos. If you do a search of, of Coney Island, you'll see that aerial shot from, uh, you know, up from the sky ride yeah. and, you know, looking down the midway and you see those trees and it was just beautiful. Now, if you want to know what uh, Coney Island looked like as an approximation, there is some artistic liberty taken, but entertainment junction, the world's largest indoor train display, Westchester, Ohio has a whole exhibit that lays out uh, Coney Island. Uh, it's got a working shooting star. It's got all the different rides. You hit buttons and the rides operate and stuff. So if you want to walk down memory lane or just learn a little bit, then that's the place for you. So that's really cool. Yeah, and they have that you, one of the buttons. Yeah, one of the buttons is that uh, speech that was given on the end of uh, the night on September 6, 1971. Like Gary Walks. Yeah. Yeah. I keep on wanting to say it's a night that'll live in infamy, but that's a different speech. Yeah, I th his his exact quote and this is featured in Fun Fireworks in 50, uh, a clip of it was uh, something about like uh, Kings Island will be the new park. It'll create new memories and it'll be beyond your wildest expectations. And I think for almost everybody that visited Coney Island, it absolutely did the next year in, you know, the spring of 1972 when the new modern uh, almost Disneyland of the Midwest. Uh, it was the Disneyland of the Midwest opened up. Well, it did. And especially the, the Coney Island section of Kings Island in 1972 and throughout the 70s when that first opened, the way they had that midway laid out where you had your Coney favorites. You know, the Tumblebug was there. The Scrambler was there. The Dodgem was there. Uh, the Flying Scooters, yeah. you know, were there. Um, Haley's Comet. Now, that's an interesting ride that Kings Island had. Uh, it had the big star on it for Haley's Comet. That star came from the shooting star. Somebody posted that so on that social media. that was the one media. thing they brought over. I saw that. Some I never yeah, realized that, was, that, but it makes perfect sense. They look exactly alike. Yeah, yeah. That was the one thing that came over. They, you know, had thought about moving the shooting star. You know, trying to relocate that as roller coasters do get relocated to different parts. Right. Um, you know, but the cost to do that, um, you know, it was just it just made more sense to to build a new wooden roller coaster. And then later in the seventies, before the Beast was built, that was one of the considerations when they were looking to build a new roller coaster. Was let's rebuild the shooting star because right before the shooting star was torn down, you know, the Al Collins and Jeff Grampies that they went out and they surveyed the shooting star and got all the dimensions, everything about it. So they could have recreated it. Uh, but at that time, when they were looking at the space where this would go, they thought that gave them a chance to really build something special, which they did with the beast. But at the same time, they thought as good as it would be for nostalgia purposes to rebuild the shooting star, they already had a ride very similar that was immensely popular with the racer. So they went with the beast. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there were a lot of factors involved with not moving it because it, uh, again, it would have cost a fortune in today's world. They don't even really do that with wooden coasters. They used to do it a lot in the early part yeah. of the 20th century. Uh, yeah. Now today, if you wanted to rebuild it too, the, you know, the codes have changed. So it could not be the same exact ride. You'd have to have a little more spacing between, you know, some of the hills and things on it. So it would not be the same exact it, ride. You could call it, it that. Probably it probably wouldn't be similar, have been the same ride in, be in 1978 when they were designing the beast too, though. It probably would have been closer than exactly. now, but it wouldn't have been exact same. And you exactly. know, in today's world, it'll probably have individual lap bars and seat belts and stuff. So you wouldn't be riding the same experience regardless. But yeah, so Labor Day, 1971, last operating day of Old Coney in, uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio, which was the mother of our favorite park, Kings Island. I'm Ryan Sir, along with Don Helbig, and this is Tower Topics.